Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today radio show. Folks, uh, you hear the ducks and the chickens in the background because it is Sunday morning, beautiful early in the morning, and um, uh, we are alive. The gift everybody needs. May God's patient understanding flood your spirit this morning as you open up your heart to His will and purpose. Amen. Folks, we all serve an awesome God. When someone says that uh, they are a Christian, what exactly does that mean? Do they believe in Jesus as the Christ? Is He the Savior or could their knowledge and belief be based on the things they have heard on TV or maybe in church? What about the Trinity? It is never mentioned in the Bible, so where did the idea come from? All of these questions are good questions and they can be answered up to a point by reading and studying God's Word. So not, besides not just the ducks, now we have the train coming too, so bear with us here. Folks, to be uh, uh, Christians, even though we only attend church on special occasions, some people think that. Granted, being a Christian is not dependent upon church attendance, but should, uh, you should want to have fellowship with fellow believers. Anyone can claim that they are Christians just by saying so, and many do just that. But the reality of it is that a Christian should be uh, changed in their heart, not just by knowing about Jesus, so that they uh, uh, went down the aisle one Sunday or uh, one revival night. Anyone can walk down the aisle and say a few words, which can lead others to believe that they are uh, sincere in their belief. But if their life doesn't change, then those were just words and nothing more. Being a Christian and serving the God and Creator uh, of the universe is a change which is a complete and whole. Meaning that you won't go back to the life you had before. You won't do the things which you were doing prior to becoming a Christian. If you haven't gone all in with Jesus, then your claim to your Christianity is false. Our God is awesome and He loves us deeply. Otherwise, he would not have sent Jesus to pay the penalty for our sins. The Trinity is referenced in the Gospels not so much as the Trinity, but by description. When Jesus was baptized, God the Father spoke and said he was his Son in whom he was pleased, and the Holy Spirit come down in the form and the shape of a dove. And rested upon Jesus. In this you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God proved that Jesus was and is his Son by resurrection of his death on the cross which uh, paid our sins debt in full. All that we have to do is to believe and repent of our, our old life and walk with him from that point on. Let, let, let me just address seven amazing aspects of an almighty God. An illuminating glimpse into the unfathomable character of God. What is God like? What is God like really? We know that he is a glorious, that no man can see him and live in Exodus 33.20. God is so far above all comprehension and understanding that we cannot even begin to fathom the depths of his character. He is even greater to us than the entire universe is to an insignificant ant. But God has revealed himself to us and has given us a small glimpse of his glory, like bright light shining through the cracks of a door. By reading the Bible, we can get a small taste of the wonder and immensity and the brilliant, shining glory of God. God is love. He who does not love uh, does not know God, for God is love. 
from 1 John 4, 7 through 8. God is love. Most people know that quote, even if they aren't believers, but to understand the depth of the love is something else. God loves people more than he can ever know. He has only thoughts of the future and the hope of each and every one of us. Jeremiah 29, 11. Think of the 7 billion people in the world, each of them going uh, about their task, walking through the park, filling their cars with gas, laughing, crying, hurting, and loving. God's heart and will lot each uh, for each and every one of us, those 7 billion people, to give them a future and hope from the most devout and God-fearing among them down to the most unrepentant sinners. There are no uh, uh, filler people. It isn't just Christian God loves. It's everybody. Each time I, I think I begin to understand his love when it hits me again like waves crashing into the beach. God loves me. Why did he create the earth? Because he loves me. Why did he forgive my sin? Because he loves me. Why does he arrange everything in my life to work towards my absolute good? Because he loves me. He will never be able to phantom the true depths of God's amazing love and care for his creation. But I can believe in it and experience some of it. And the most, uh, uh, the more I think about it, how great the love must be, the more I am driven on to return that love in some small way with my own life. To do everything I do for my God because he loves me. And he has given me everything. The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. And um, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only forgot begotten Son, that whomever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life John 3:16 God is righteous righteous are you O Lord you upright are your judgments in Psalms 119 in everything that God is he is always righteous every decision he makes every action he takes is just and right he makes no mistakes he is not unfair neither does God play favorites not even Christians will get off easier than others. Everyone will be judged according to this uh, same standard, God's spiritual laws. For there is no partial with God. Romans 2, 11. Read further in Romans 2, 12 through 16. We can see time and time again examples of God's righteousness in the Bible. When he destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he promised Abraham that he would have spared them if only ten righteous souls were found. Read Genesis 18, but they were not there. The destruction of the place was just. When everything is said and done, God will sit on his throne and judge uh, each one according to their actions. 2 Corinthians 5 through 10, nobody will be able to say that the judgment they receive is unrighteousness. Everything will be rewarded or punished to an exact degree, Judge the, uh, judges righteously. Great and marvelous are the, your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of love and saints. A revelation. God is forgiving. God is forgiving. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. 1 John 2 1. Forgiveness is something that can be easy to take for granted, but we shouldn't forget what an amazing thing forgiveness really is. Who hasn't done or um, uh, said anything with regret? Some mistakes can uh, stain your life like coffee on white t-shirt. No matter how hard you try, you can't uh, look as it, focus on it, wish with all your heart that you could go back and undo it, but God his infinite love forgives and forgives and forgives. There are conditions for forgiveness in Matthew 6:15 and Acts 3:19, but they 
are not difficult to attain. God has made it easy as possible for us to attain forgiveness and thereby uh, experience His goodness and perfect will. And this forgiveness is absolute. When we are forgiven, then we are forgiven and we are washed clean again. A totally clean slate to start on again. When you think of what sin actually is and how God sees it, it really is amazing that He forgives us so often. When we sin, we are um, uh, ourselves and those around us, but it is a personal affront to God that we, His lowly creation, should choose to go against His perfect plan for us. It is the ultimate insult. If you, Lord, should mark in Greece, O Lord, you could stand. But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared in Psalms 133, 4. Forgiveness is really awesome, inspiring. It should come with God fear. It should make us so thankful for God that His goodness that we begin to fear sinning again against Him. Every sin that gets wiped away is another reason to never sin again. Think how good God is to keep us, to keep on forgiving over and over and over again. God is wrath. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. In Romans 1.18, God is love, he is patient, he is righteous, and he is also wrath. His wrath is not over people but over sin because his love for people is so deep we must necessarily hate everything that harms his creation with hatred that runs just as deeply as his love. They are two sides of the same coin. God hates sin because he knows how damaging it is. He sees sin hurt and corrupt and destroyed. His perfect creation time and time again, he understands all pain and suffering that is caused because uh, uh, of it. God wants it to rid of uh, uh, us of sin utterly and thoroughly. But right now is the time of grace and the time where God has chosen to let people separate themselves from their sin. He is letting people make the decision uh, to serve Him instead of their sin. It is a time to make use of the immense power of the wrath of God and cleanse out all of the sin that dwells in you. Let it burn through you like a fire, my friends. How dare Satan corrupt the perfect creation? How dare he lead people into quarreling, impatience, lying, anxiety, sexual immortality, and, and all those other sins that cause so much damage to the people and the relationships? How dare he start wars that plague and fam uh, famines and terrorist attacks and everything else he does? How dare he try to take us out of God's loving hands? If you feel that burning hatred against sin seething within you, just imagine how God feels, who understands far more than we could ever think or even feel. God's wrath is not unjust or unrighteousness, but neither is it something to be feared. He is also abundantly patient and merciful for the souls who long to pleasing to Him. And of course, the last one is God is almighty. Have you uh, not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He understands the unsearchable. He gives power to um, to us and to those who have no might. He increases strength in Isaiah forty twenty eight through twenty nine. God can do everything. He created the heavens and earth within uh, with one a word. He breathed life into Adam and made mankind. He created the wind and the water, stars and planets. He created the entire universe. He is capable of doing everything he wants. He has the power to forgive sins and to raise people up from the dead. Folks, he is God. Call me at 844-405. Help together. We can help each other take our lives back. Have a great Sunday. May God bless each and every one of you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And have a great, great day. Take care.